Okay friends, it's time to get started on replacing our exhaust manifold slash catalytic converter. That's located right on the front of the engine. Overall, it's not going to be the hardest thing to do, but keep in mind you are going to have to get under the front of the vehicle. Now with that said, let's get started. To make this a little bit easier to see, I'm just going to remove this coolant hose from the area. You don't have to remove it for this service. Let's take that O2 sensor tool and slide it right into place. Now we're going to turn this counterclockwise to remove the O2 sensor. There we are. Now that we have the O2 sensor broken free, go ahead and follow it up. You're going to find that you have a plastic clamp that holds it to the upper radiator hose. Now to remove this, you're going to find that you have two ears along each side of it. Squeeze those ears and then separate it. We'll remove this plastic and then we'll make our way all the way up to the electrical connector. So for this electrical connector, if you were to feel along the back side here, there's going to be a little squeeze tab. You can squeeze on that tab and then gently separate it. If you can't squeeze it hard enough to remove it, continue on with a small flat blade screwdriver. We'll carefully get in between this area and gently pry up on the locking tab. Give both sides of that wiring a quick inspection. We're trying to see if there's any corrosion. If there is, that would need to be dealt with. Let's make our way back over to that O2 sensor, finish turning it counterclockwise to fully remove it from the vehicle. Now the next thing we're going to do is move along to removing this metal heat shield. There's going to be several bolts that hold it in place, but you'll notice this one's kind of blocked. We're going to have to remove this plastic upper shield. To remove the plastic upper shield, you're going to find two 10 millimeter headed nuts. Remove the pair and then the plastic cover. Sometimes the stud comes out with it, that's okay. We'll set this aside. Now we can start removing that shield. We're going to continue using a 12 millimeter to remove each of our mounting bolts. Now on the passenger side of the manifold, this bolt's a little bit harder to get to. You have the AC line that's right next to the area. With all the bolts out of the way, go ahead and remove that shield. Now we can start dismounting the manifold from the engine. Looking along the manifold, you're going to find five 12 millimeter nuts holding it in place. Let's remove all five 12 millimeter nuts. To get these off of here, it's always a good idea to use a little bit of penetrant. The center one's nice and low. Now this last mounting nut down here is a little bit harder to get to. As you can tell, there's an alternator in the way. Generally, you can start taking this out with a socket and then you're gonna have to switch to either by hand or with a wrench of some sort.
Now let's use a 14 millimeter, a short extension, and a ratchet. We're gonna come down along the driver's side of the exhaust manifold and remove our lower bracket that holds the exhaust manifold to the engine. There's that one. Now it's time to make it safely underneath the front of the vehicle. We're gonna be looking for the plastic that leads over towards the passenger side. Now to take this down, there might be several different things that hold it in place. For us, we just have one simple bolt here. We'll pull this down. Now with that shield out of the way, let's have a look along the passenger side of the catalytic converter. You're gonna find the bolt that holds the bracket to the engine. Remove it. Put my socket on here. Now that we have the brackets dismounted from the engine, you'll notice that you can move the exhaust around a little bit. That's a good sign. We're gonna have to continue on to each of our two spring bolts. Now for ours, as you can tell, they're completely rotted. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off the heads of these and be extremely careful because the spring will wanna come off. After that, when both sides are off, we can make our way back up into the engine compartment. Once you've removed your spring bolt hardware from the area, we'll continue on by gently separating the pipes. Now we're back in the engine compartment. Let's carefully grab onto that exhaust manifold. We're gonna pull it away from the engine and then draw it straight up and out. Now we have the manifold out of the vehicle, we can continue stripping all the excess parts off of it and get ready to swap them over to the brand new manifold catalytic converter assembly. Let's start with this shield right here. You're gonna find that you have two 12 millimeter headed bolts. Remove the pair and then remove the shield. Now we can move along to our lower shield. You're gonna find four mounting bolts for this, two on either side. As you can tell, the two that are on this side are pretty much completely rotted. I'm not even gonna worry about this one because the shield's rotted away. For this one, I'll use a twisty socket. We'll replace the hardware as necessary. Let's remove and inspect that shield. We'll set that aside. Now we can move along to each of our manifold brackets. For these, you're gonna use a 14 millimeter to remove the nut and then remove the bracket from the manifold. As you can tell, that removed the stud, that's okay. I'll set that aside. Now we can remove that bracket, we'll give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Now we can move over to the other side of the catalytic converter manifold assembly and remove our other nut. I'll continue with one of my twisty sockets because as you can tell, ours is completely rotted.
inspect that bracket, set it aside. Now let's make our way back over to the vehicle. It's time for a little cleanup. We're gonna make our way all the way down to where the flex pipe is. That's the pipe that connects onto that catalytic converter down along the bottom. You'll notice it has a whole bunch of existing gasket. We're gonna have to remove all of that. To remove it, typically it's a good idea to use a rag of some sort. I'm gonna come down into the center of the pipe, making sure that I leave plenty of rag so I can remove it easily. The rag's gonna protect the inside of the pipe from any debris that might try to fall inside. Now let's remove any existing gasket from the area. Now we're gonna have to get the rest of the gasket out of that area. I'll use a tool that looks like this. You can also use a screwdriver, pry bar, whatever you might happen to have. I'm gonna try to get underneath the lip and gently pry it out. <laughs> hey, there it is. Now that I have this cleaned down as well as possible, I'll continue on by carefully pulling the rag out of there. I'm trying to remove any of the debris that tried falling into the pipe. Now that we have that cleaned down there, I'll make sure that I cover this area. With that covered, let's move up to the engine where the manifold mounts onto. Remove your existing gasket. We'll give that a quick inspection. Set that aside. With the gasket out of the way, let's continue on to cleaning up the engine. Now, just like with the lower pipe, when you go to clean this, you wanna make sure that no debris falls inside any of the ports. It's extremely important. With that said, I'll continue with some nice clean rags. You'll roll them up and then just gently slide it in here. Don't press it in so far that you're gonna damage the engine in any way. You wanna make sure you can still grab it. All we're doing is making sure that no debris can make its way into the engine. We'll cover all the ports and then we'll continue. Now it's gonna be time to clean up the engine where the manifold gasket's gonna sit. Now when you do this, you wanna be extremely careful cleaning down the engine. Keep in mind, it's only aluminum. You don't wanna damage it. Commonly, you can just go ahead and use a flat sanding block for this with some sandpaper. Otherwise, if you happen to have a cloth sanding disc, you can carefully do that. But be extremely careful not to damage or warp the engine head. Now that we have the area cleaned up, let's continue on by removing all of our safety rags here. Now we can install our gasket. Line that up over all of your mounting studs and slide it up against the engine. Let's reach down here and remove our protective rag. Now it's gonna be time to start preparing the manifold to be installed in the vehicle. Let's start putting on our heat shields. I'm gonna bring this down in place and try to line up all of my mounting bolt holes. I'll start this bolt in there. Now, as we move along, you might happen to find that your heat shield looks as though it's rotted in some way. If that's the case, you're obviously gonna to wanna to use some sort of support in that area. I have a nice flat washer. I'll just slide it right over there and start this mounting bolt in as well. Make our way over to the other side, start those in. Once you have all four of your mounting bolts started for this shield, snug them up. Let's put on our little corner shield here. Thank you. 
Now let's continue on down along the bottom of the manifold converter assembly. On the original converter, you had some studs that came out of this area. You'll notice with your kit, it came with brand new studs. To install these, it's gonna be easiest if you have two 10 by 125 nuts. Now to put these on, what you wanna do is go to the long side of the threads. Let's take our first nut and we'll start right on there. Make sure you leave some threads down there. We'll take the second and mount it on there as well. Now we're gonna continue tightening this one onto that one. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now we can install this into the manifold converter. Let's tighten this up. Now that we have that nice and tight in there, go ahead and remove each of your mounting nuts. Do the same on the other side. That one's nice and tight. Now let's make our way back over towards the vehicle. We're gonna grab that lower gasket. It's considered a donut gasket. Slide it right on over here, put it in place. Now we can put the manifold down into position. Now as I bring this down, I'm being extremely careful not to damage that lower gasket. I'll put it in place on the pipe and line up the top area as well. Now that we have the manifold sitting in this area, let's continue on to our mounting nuts. We'll start each of these on here. We're gonna bottom these out and then we're gonna torque them in a specific order to manufacturer specification. Now, as we start snugging this up, you're gonna find that I start from the very center and then I continue by making my way out to the very corners. Now that we have them all snug, let's torque each of these in the same sequence to 27 foot-pounds. Now to access this one over here, we're gonna have to use a swivel extension. Now let's continue by putting in the mounting bolt that holds the bracket to the side of the engine. Now that I have that nut tight, I'm gonna continue on to tightening the bolt. Let's put our other bracket on here now. Slide this into place, line up both of our mounting areas. Let's start in our mounting bolt.
All right, tighten them both up. You'll notice with your kit, it came with a brand new spring bolt assembly. For these, you just slide the spring right over that mounting bolt. We'll slide it up through this pipe and start screwing it into our catalytic converter manifold assembly. Start on both sides, snug them up. both of these started, the next thing I want you to pay attention to is you also have a second pair of nuts. Now to mount each of these nuts, what you wanna do is start putting the spring bolt up and through the manifold, just, just enough so you can see some threads. We'll get that mounting nut in place. I'll hold that with a 14 millimeter wrench and now I can snug this up. Once that's tight, I'll make sure that the nut's tight as well. That locks in the spring bolt so I don't have to worry about it loosening up on me while I'm driving down the road. Do the same to the other spring bolt. Okay, at this point we've finished everything up that we need to with the exhaust from down underneath the vehicle. Just double check everything. We know for sure we've got everything nice and tight and the brackets are in place. After that, continue on with your splash shield. Go ahead and put it back into its original position and then we can make our way back under the hood. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now from up top, we can continue on to our last shield. We're gonna to wanna to line up all of our mounting bolt holes on the shield with the mounting bolt holes that are on our manifold. Slide this in position. So now that we have this set in place, we'll continue on by starting in all four of our mounting bolts. Once we have each of them started, we can snug them up. that one. Get this one in down here as well. get this cover back on here. Once you have your mounting hardware started, snug it up. All right, now it's time to install our O2 sensor. Let's carefully start screwing this in by hand into the catalytic converter assembly. As we're screwing this in, be extremely careful not to damage your wiring or the threads of the O2 sensor. Now that I have that as tight as I can by hand, I'll continue snugging it with my ratchet. Let's reconnect our O2 sensor. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's completely secured. Time for our plastic clip. We're gonna take this, put it around the O2 sensor wire and bring it right up to that upper radiator hose. Put the clip into place and lock it in. Okay friends, we got our manifold slash catalytic converter assembly installed in the vehicle. At this point, you wanna go ahead and start up the car. Let it run for a little while. Make sure you don't have a check engine light or an exhaust leak. After that, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching.
when only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.